South Africa's new members of parliament will elect the country's next president today during their first sitting. On May 29, South Africans voted for national and provincial lawmakers in an election which saw the ruling African National Congress, uh, which has been in power since 1994, falling short of getting a majority for the first time. Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will today administer the oath to the newly elected 400 members of parliament who will then elect a speaker and deputy speaker. Later, Chief Justice Zondo will preside over the election of the next South African president. This is the first time that a candidate from the ruling ANC is not guaranteed an automatic win as the party lost its parliamentary majority in the May 29 elections. Joining us now on this show as we examine what is likely to play out during today's election is Dr. Kester Ono, Senior Research Fellow at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. He's been joined by Kundai Vambe, a columnist at the Southern African Times. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Dr. Ruben, and thank you for having me once again. Yes. Well, let's start with you, uh, Kunda. Hello, Kunda, if you can hear me. Hello, how are you? Excellent. Thank you for thank you for having me. Eh? Yeah, thank you for joining us very quickly. I'd like to ask you, what should we expect today? There's been so much talk about government of national unity, so much talk also about uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, with his party having just 40.1% uh, of the votes on uh, May 29, uh, probably losing uh, his position. So that government of national unity, who and who will be there? Uh, will it be the DA, the ANC, and the uh, Nkata Freedom Party? Um, thank you. It has been a very uncertain period. The ANC has found itself in a very difficult position since the attainment of uh, South African independence. Uh, it is very difficult to tell who is going to be in the coalition, at least, or the government of national unity. At least there's been a lot of talk about the Democratic Alliance, ANC, and IFP. With the IFP publicly coming out saying they'll be joining the government of national unity. Uh, but however, yesterday uh, evening, the ANC Secretary General Fikile Mbalula uh, said, yes, there's been discussions, but there is no details as to what constitutes the government of national unity. The details are yet to be ironed out, which just feeds into more uncertainty. Then moving on to your other question, what do we expect today? Today, we expect a very intense uh, session in the National Assembly, given the fact that the ANC has lost its majority for the first time in its history as the leading political party in the country. Uh, which makes the voting very difficult. It is going to be a, a secret ballot, and the quorum has to have at least uh, a third of the elected members present for the vote to take place. And the pre uh, first they will vote for the Speaker of Parliament and followed by the Deputy Speaker before they vote for the President. Um, what is required for the vote President to be elected is a majority of the votes cast bearing in mind that the mk has already pulled out saying they are not they're not sending their people uh to the first sitting of this assembly so those 58 are already out of the question and we're dealing with the anc predominantly the da eff ifp and other political parties the outcome however is determined by the discussions that have been taking place between the governing ruling party, the governing ANC, and the other players like the Democratic Alliance and the IFP. That's what determines the outcome eventually. But at this stage, it's highly looking like President Ramaphosa will emerge as the president of South Africa after this, unless if there's something extraordinary that happened behind closed doors. Well, uh, uh, Dr. Ono, let me ask you, it looks like what they have in South Africa is a very complex you new know, alliance. And we've also seen that not just with this National Assembly 
uh, issue today. Uh, do you see the possibility of uh, Siri Ramaphosa not surviving, particularly as uh, the MK, you know, uh, uh, is pulling out? Although we know that that doesn't have any effect. What you need is a third to form a quorum of the uh, total number of uh, 400. Do you think that uh, Siri Ramaphosa would survive? Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ruben. I think uh, going by the latest information we had this morning, from the president of uh, Nkata Freedom Party. Uh, he said that uh, talks are ongoing, that obviously that uh, even the MK party that refused to maybe attend the first section this morning that they're changing their mind based on the ongoing talk that some of them will be attending this section. And uh, if there is anything we are to go with from what he said this morning, that is uh, Mr. Tabisa, he said that uh, the issue of uh, maybe Rosere Ramaphosa, imagine as the president of South Africa is not negotiable because he's coming. And see, at least, even though that they have lost their parliamentary majority, they are still the main party, at least with about uh, 159 seats, you know, that are still leading. So there is a coalition between ANC, Democratic Alliance, that is DA, and uh, Nkata Freedom Party. You know, and you know that uh, the president of South Africa, you know, is required to have uh, 201 and above, you know, for him to clinch that seat. So I think that uh, Sorel at least uh, finally has survived. All right. L let's look again at the proceedings today. Kundai, let me start with you before coming into studio. Uh, late last night, Chief Justice uh, Zondo changed the rules in, in essence, he changed the constitution pertaining to the rules of today's proceedings. And uh, that was, I believe, rule number eight. And he added a nine, 10 and 11 about decorum as they expect a rowdy session today. Now, based off of these new rules, uh, is it possible that today's election can, in essence, be suspended if some members behave in a rowdy manner during the service? Is, is there leeway for, for today to be uh, suspended? Um, I do not think there is any leeway today um, for the proceedings to be suspended. Um, it is highly unlikely. Traditionally, we have known um, the EFF to always trigger these, this rowdy behavior. But sensationally, last night, uh, the EFF leader, Julius Malema, did uh, almost promise the country that they will not be engaging in such behavior, which was very commendable of him. So it's highly unlikely, regardless of the changes announced by Chief Justice Zondo. Dr. Ono, you'd mentioned protests today. Definitely. Uh, about uh, six political parties, you know, they have uh, expressed their grievances concerning the talk that they are not being carried along. Because South Africa, they have voted that they wanted a government of national unity, and it's all about South Africans. So those six uh, political parties, uh, this morning at least one of them, we are calling out South Africans to move to the street, to protest, to demonstrate, you know, being that they are not being carried along, that they expected that they will be carried along. But uh, from what uh, the president of Nkata Freedom Movement said, uh, Freedom Party said this morning, he said, yes, obviously that some of them you know, they've insisted on certain conditionalities. And they based on such conditionalities, for example, you know that EFF initially insisted that for them to enter into the coalition, the government of, uh, coalition government with uh, ANC, that they have to give them the position of the vice president or that of uh, finance minister. And uh, what of MK? MK equally insisted that they are ready for coalition government, but Sere Mar uh, Ramaphosa will no longer be the president. So when you look at such, such conditionalities, at least ANC has been able to find a kind of a level playing ground for them to discuss, even though that DA initially, you know, uh, express, you know, their intentions that uh, two core policies of ANC that they were not ready, you know, to work with them. But I think that this time around, because they said that of a black empowerment and national health insurance scheme, that they are not ready, that those policies has to be changed for them to move into coalition. But ANC made it obvious to them that these core policies 
are the pillars of ANC that they're not going to go back on those policies. So from the look of things, I think they've finally found a common ground. And you know that even DA, they cannot work with EFF because DA is EFF as public enemy number one. You understand? But for the fact now that they're now working with ANC and the Nkata Freedom Party, I believe that at least today we are going to see the emergence of uh, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa for the second and the last time. Okay. What's the viability of all of this mixed bag associations? So we have not got into South Africa, and I'll, I'll come to you first, um, uh, uh, Kudai. We have not got into South Africa where you are having an association with Botelese's party, the ANC, and probably you're putting the EFF, Malema's party, in the mix, which is going to be opening the floodgate of inefficiency a lack of accountability. I mean, we all know the antecedents. So what's going to be the sustainability plan as regards this? Isn't South Africa going back to the wild, wild west of the yesteryears and political dungeon all again? Kundai? Um, very interesting perspective. Yes, um, we are almost agreed that a government will be set up, but the question is its sustainability. Like you rightly said, there's a lot of intricacies within the South African community itself. You've got the IFP, you've got the DA, you've got the ANC, and you're almost dealing with, uh, with people who've got completely different beliefs. Even though, like the doctor said, they're trying to find common ground, but is it sustainable? I question the sustainability of this arrangement. Um, that to a great extent, it's going to store a lot of progress as far as South Africa is concerned and almost take it backwards there is going to be a lot of pull and push between these two parties. A lot of mistrust, I still believe, lies beneath the surface of this agreement that they're about to get into, do you think, given the ideological differences and historical differences. Do you think, at some point, Cyril, being very, always try to be the man in the room, the big man in the room, do you think, at some point, Cyril will say, damn it, let me test my integrity again and call for a snap election at some point. Because Cyril is not comfortable with all of this. Do you think that might happen sometime in the future? Um, you are very correct. Uh, do not, the president is not comfortable with this, with this arrangement. But at the same time, he has a lot to deal with. His leadership of the ANC has been brought to question. Uh, we have had that... Uh, there has been divisions within the ANC itself. Him retaining the presidency is one thing is going to happen. It's likely going to happen. But him sustaining it is a different story altogether. Whereas I, I actually think we are going to have... Remember, if, we, if I take you back, there was an issue on Palapala. He survived that issue because the ANC had a majority back then to get it to go away. But recently, the EFF brought it back and the ANC no longer has a majority. And this was used as a basis for motion of no confidence on the president. So let's picture a scenario where this is brought back in a situation where the ANC no longer has a majority to be the president. And the DA, on the other hand, they have been supporting a motion of no confidence. How then do they turn around from an ideological perspective and say we are not supporting the motion of no confidence when just yesterday you were supporting the motion of no confidence. So to, I do agree with you, sustainability is an issue here because of the dynamics within South African community and different ideological perspectives within the parties. Okay. I'll come to you. I also ask you the question of sustainability. And do you also think the issue of Cyril not having the mandate will come up? Because he doesn't have the mandate. Uh, obviously. Yes, it may come up at some point. But you know, like ANC, they are counting on the ability of a Cyril as a unionist and a good negotiator that uh, this is the right time for him to, you know, to display his leadership uh, ability by harmonizing all the political parties together and uh, provide the basic uh, necessities that South Africa deserved. 
we should equally realize that South Africans voted for this. You understand? And this vote this is the first time in 30 years that uh, ANC are losing parliamentary majority. And uh, it's obvious that uh, that confidence on ANC, you can see that it has gradually waned. So it's now left for him to use uh, his uh, leadership ability, you know, to know how to handle the situation. Then let us equally bear in mind that this is not the first time South Africa, you know, is uh, meeting this kind of a situation. There was a time that uh, in Qatar, uh, Butalizi, that it's in Qatar Freedom, party. yes, the party worked, you know, with oppositions. We know that IFP, they are conservative in nature, but they have equally promised the uh, Zulu people that uh, regardless that they are here together, they are not going to throw away their ideology, but they are here to see that South but, Africa... But the IFP, people have voted for Mkonto Esizwe. But the IFP it, 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 has always been a big sellout. Uh, but the well, has always been a big sellout. Well, well, uh, that's why I deliberately they didn't want to use the Qatar Freedom Party. I deliberately called it what it is. It's Butelizi's party, yes. And Butelizi has always been the same. But he made a promise that uh, this time around that, you know, they will remain true to their people, that they are still working with the ideology. But the issue is that they must find a pathway for South Africa to move forward. Even the MK, like I said earlier, you know, some of them are now saying that they will attend. You know, IF, Five have confirmed. Yes, IFP actually said that uh, they went for meeting, you know, to have meeting with MK, that MK kept them for about four hours. But even as we are okay. speaking, talks are still ongoing. Kundai, let me come back to you. Uh, this is not the first time South Africans are talking about government of national unity. The first post apartheid, you know, uh, government led by Nelson Mandela was a government of national unity. He survived only for three years when the National Party pulled out. And to your point about ideological differences, I mean, the difference have never been so sharp. A democratic Alliance is uh, against, uh, well, let me put it like that, it's considered a racist party in the sense that it doesn't support affirmative action uh, for blacks. Uh, IFP is an ethnic party. It's, a, it's the main base is in uh, KwaZulu Natal. Natal. And then you have the ANC that is interested in the black majority. But I thought it was you that wrote the uh, article. I don't remember who the author is now, but it was in your newspaper about um, Mashitile. I think that's his name, the vice president. Yes, yes, Paul now, Mashitile, yes. Yeah, so if, uh, if uh, Ramaphosa, by chance, for example, is there a chance for, you know, uh, the vice president, uh, now that it looks like Ramaphosa may still fall on uh, Jacob Zuma's sword. Very interesting. So the Citizen this morning, one of the newspapers in the country, carried a story that the headline actually said was questioning the survival of President Cyril Ramaphosa. And they clearly stated that Poma Shatile is meted within the ANC to take from President Ramaphosa in the event that he does not survive this coming wave, as I would prefer to call it. So that's where it's moving towards. And it goes back to what you're talking about, ideological differences. You spoke about the DA and the ANC having sharp ideological differences, as you would like to compare it with almost uh, the election, the, the government of national unity first established during the reign of uh, President Nelson Mandela. If you have been following what has been happening in South Africa, the EFF specifically have been dismissing that government of national unity, that it never worked for South Africa. It did not achieve what it was supposed to achieve. That's why they are opposed to any uh, government of national unity that's got to do with uh, different entities with such sharp ideological differences. Uh, going back to the actual ideological differences, you sort of missed your words when you're talking about the DA. So the key word that the ANC was supposed to do, the key phrase rather was radical economic transformation. Oh, this yeah. is the one thing that the DA does not want to hear mm. because it simply means fast forwarding the balance in the economic, uh, in the economic sector between the predominantly uh, uh, poor people 
and the currently rich people, and we know who is that. And the majority are predominantly poor. We're trying to bring a balance, hence radical economic transformation. That's one thing that the Democratic Alliance is opposed to, yet it is a critical aspect of the ANC. So wow. the chances of this coalition, this government of national unit surviving or being sustainable are very slim. All right, I believe we're rounding up, but just from both of you, these are very short answers. Is this the beginning of the end of the ANC? The government of national unity in 1994 was made of ANC as a majority party, not as ANC as a minority party. Yeah. Now ANC is getting into bed with what we can all call white monopoly capital, if we're to use the terminology out there, the DA, Freedom Front. And oh, we know that this is why the black parties are refusing to come to bed with the ANC. So with just 40%, uh, you know, we, we literally have 20 seconds. Kundai, the beginning of the end of the ANC, is this it? This is it. If they don't find each other with the MK, this is it. Dr. Ono? Well, just like he said, that if they don't find a, comf a comfortable marriage with MK, at least it's a, a step towards disintegration of ANC. Could, could I, in what breath would you say that the same Butelizis party that supported the Bantu Sand system will go into bed with an ANC for black empowerment? I mean, how does that even happen? I think the IFP, in, my, in all honesty, it was a very opportunistic move by the ANC. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kundai, uh, for joining us. Thank you also, uh, Dr. Uno. Thank you. We keep our fingers crossed as we watch developments in South Africa. Today.